I've been performing laser vitreolysis or laser floater removal now for approximately three and a half years. We've actually performed over 600 cases. Uh, it's funny how I got started. You know, like a lot of us out there, I was kind of uh, naive to vitreolysis and I didn't really understand the process, the technology, the technique. And, and actually, I was kind of skeptical. I had a primary care doctor, a friend of mine, who had been seeing me every single year for a floater. And every year, he'd have the same complaint. I have a floater, and it was interfering with his daily functioning. In fact, he couldn't even read charts. He did research on his own. He went to a colleague uh, on the East Coast who was performing YAG vitreolysis. Well, this doctor friend of mine came back a few months later and said he was cured. I said, what do you mean? He said, I had the laser done, and now it's gone, and I can function better again. Well, just at that time, it was before the Academy meeting, and our old YAG laser had died out, finally. Alex had just come out with the Ultra QR, and at that time, I had needed a laser anyways, and they had talked about vitreolysis. Well, because my friend had this procedure done, I was curious. So I bought the laser initially, mostly for the YAG capsulotomy characteristics of it, but I started performing vitreolysis. And as I started performing this laser for floater removal, I started seeing the impact on patients' quality of life. After performing over 600 cases, I can honestly tell you that the impact is similar and it rivals that of cataract surgery, refractive surgery as well. And until you start doing this procedure, you don't really realize what it does for these patients postoperatively. A lot of the technologies that we're seeing that have been done before were technologies that were not focused or maximized for vitreolysis. As cataract surgery changed, as technology changed, so did the technique and, and vice versa. And we're seeing that with YAG vitreolysis. And one of the biggest issues we faced historically was being able to visualize the vitreous and give ourselves context in terms of how far are we from the lens and how far is a floater from the retina. Without that visualization, it's not only difficult to perform the procedure, but it's also not safe. Conventional YAG lasers do not give us the ability to have that visualization, not just in the anterior vitreous, but the middle and posterior vitreous, and not able to give us the context that we need to know safety-wise how far am I from the posterior capsule and how far am I from the retina. The other issue is trying to vaporize these floaters. In other lasers that are out there, and historically, the energy beam is slightly different. With this Ultra QR, the laser beam is truncated. It has a sharp rise and fall of the energy beam, which allows it to be more efficient. So it causes an optical breakdown or vaporization at a lower energy level. But also you can increase the energy level and have less dissipation of energy. It's a non-linear rise in dissipation of energy as you rise in the actual energy treatment. Some of the doctors in the past that have tried vitreolysis were using energy levels that were sometimes in the area of one to two millijoules. And oftentimes we're using energy levels at five, six, seven, even eight and higher. But the energy breakdown is not gonna cause significant destruction into the vitreous as well. And that's why the technology allows us to change our technique. And because we're able to visualize better, we're able to not only identify floaters better, we're able to safely treat those that we even historically would have just left alone. One of the key differentiating factors of the Ultra QR is its ability to perform the laser coaxially. But when you have an off-axis position, you lose the red glow and you lose the depth perception and lose the ability to visualize in the middle and posterior vitreous. And what the Ultra QR has is a proprietary tower that allows the user's view, the aiming beam, and the laser beam all to be on the same axis. So they're all coaxial. What that allows us is to visualize and have 100% of the light and the energy of the laser visualizing and treating at the same time. So the mirror actually goes out of the way as you're firing. Therefore, you're not losing any visualization. And that's very, very important when we're talking about Weiss rings, talking about floaters in the anterior, even posterior vitreous. But that also is what allows us to give us the context to know how far am I from the retina. When I'm treating a Weiss ring over the optic nerve, how do I know if I'm gonna hit the nerve? That's a very, very important and very scary issue for us. But because of this laser and because of the coaxial characteristics, we know if the floater is in focus and the retina is not in focus, I am safe enough to perform the procedure. If the floater and the retina or the optic nerve are in close proximity, then the focusing will be close to each other. So if the retina is in focus as a floater is in focus, then I know I'm too close. But the beauty of the Ultra QR is not just the coaxial illumination, 
It's also the ability to go back and forth and to toggle between off and on axis. In other words, we have the ability to also use it in the off axis position, which is what most of our colleagues are comfortable using. What the off axis position gives us is beautiful context and beautiful visualization of anterior structures, such as the posterior capsule. So if I have a floater right behind the lens, a phacic patient, and I'm concerned, am I gonna hit that phacic lens? Sometimes in the on axis position, we can see the floater, but we don't have great visualization and context of where the posterior capsule ends. By using the off axis, I'm able to visualize where the posterior capsule ends. So therefore, if the floater is right behind the posterior capsule, I can use the off axis position to judge how far back I am. Once I see the posterior capsule, I can go further back. If the floater is not right there in the off axis position, I know that I have enough distance to feel safe to perform the procedure without hitting the posterior capsule as well. So having the ability to both toggle between the on axis position and off axis position is crucial. So visualization is probably the key. The second part is the energy source as well. Having ability to perform the surgery, the procedure rather, in a higher energy setting without much dissipation of energy in the vitreous. Well here we are performing YAG vitreolysis with the Ultra QR and I'm toggling back and forth between the on axis position where there's a red glow, but you see the floaters are more camouflaged behind that red glow. So I go in the off axis position and now you're seeing these floaters stark white. That's because you lose that red glow and you get a better contrast. It also helps visualize the aiming beams. And I can go anterior and posterior to help me visualize how far I am from the posterior capsule. In this accommodating lens, I do not want to pit the lens, so I'm always concerned about making sure I'm not too close to the lens that we had implanted. And you see here these floaters, what's nice about the energy profile is the floater isn't jumping far away. When you have efficient energy, these floaters tend to stay close where they are being vaporized instead of jumping far into the vitreous. And that's important because as you increase the energy, if there's significant increase in the dissipation of energy, those floaters potentially could fly away and you have to start chasing these floaters. What I've noticed with the Ultra QR is I don't see those floaters jumping far away. And that also helps with safety as well as the efficiency in terms of how much time it takes to perform the procedure as well.